All right, so in this video, we'll be talking about the differences in Factory Talk Site Edition alarming. Uh, and the alarming we're gonna talk about is the alarms and events and the HMI tag alarms, right? So there's two different type of tags. Um, now, when are alarming structures, if you would. So in the, in the event of moving forward, now Factory Talk 10 and above, uh, meaning Factory Talk 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on, will no longer support HMI tag alarm summary um, so uh, with that said if you are on that current system using those alarms you need to have the plans to migrate up um, I've always taught in my you know as you can see basically from my videos and, and everything like that I've taught factory talk alarms and events um, the reason being is because again everything is moving forward and I've taught this ever since factory talk um, 7 you know going really kind of moving forward that's really the go-to right there's two different other uh, platforms you can or uh, alarming structures you can use um, so I'm gonna show you this right so I'm gonna show you the differences between the two currently I have an alarm um, actually on alarms and events showing up and this is the batching station uh, which that project again I've made on YouTube um, again when it comes down to it I also did this servo uh, say, uh, uh, project as far as that goes and it, it actually has alarms and events again as well so we've always kind of I've always kind of taught that method but I felt it was needed to understand the difference between legacy and then alarms and events so uh, the this is the uh, alarms and events right this gives you all the information from the ALMD right this is the a this alarms and events are for, derived from an ALMD which the ALMD is inside of the PLC processor and that's a digital alarm, right? So it's an instruction you set up in your processor to give you whatever message uh, you want via the tag that in basically simple ladder, right? So if the ladder is true, the instruction triggers and it gives you the message. Now also with that said, you can also reset that. Um, now with that said too, the legacy alarms are done quite different, right? So the, there, I also have the legacy alarm so I'm pulling up a whole different screen. You can see that I can acknowledge all right here. Uh, come in and filter. Um, I can have filters and stuff like that. I can sort things, I can do the current. Now currently I, I have this actually triggered, right? So I actually currently have this, this alarm triggered and I'll show you that right here is I have this alarm triggered and I actually tied in two separate bits so that I could actually run these in tandem so I could run these side by side and it, no, no problem so I'm basically firing off one bit to trigger my ALMD for my alarms and events and I'm doing another one for my legacy system now how does the legacy system work okay there's a couple things in play here now I'm gonna pull these up so what I'm doing and I'm gonna show you how, how the conductivity works right so a legacy system a legacy uh, basically a legacy tag alarm system if you are watching this video you probably understand that that is a tag based system right so that means you're using your HMI tags and currently on just about everything I've taught unless I'm doing you know let's just say like some VBA code or if I'm, I'm running something where I use a need need to use a memory tag I generally uh, don't use the HMI tags and the HMI tags again I use uh, direct tagging which I can show you right here when I'm talking about direct tagging I just pull up right here um, let's just say this would be animated so let's just pull up the animation this is direct tagging so there's no need for with uh, moving forward there's really no need to use the alarm or the tag uh, HMI tags right here now again 90% of us in the automation field have applications where we use the tags uh, or we've we've had uh, tag HMI tags from like RS view that we migrated up to factory talk site edition or are continuously growing with the software so we we ended up with these legacy type things now again with the legacy alarming I want to talk about how that's structured all right so currently I have one alarm in here um, I added this uh, basically this uh, folder and if you want to add a folder you just come up here you click add folder you create the folder name all I did was create the name alarms there's currently no alarm inside of the alarms I added another layer down because generally systems are going to be structured where they are segmented in areas so I call this area the batching station or the batching area 
And what I did is I made a simple tag, right? That's that, this is uh, pointing to that tag, right? It's a digital alarm. I give it a description. I give it a, an alarm or I give it a, a label on. And the what makes this an alarm is checking this box. Checking this box is really where your setup of your alarm is, right? So your setup of your alarm, again, when it comes down to it, is done right here just very 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 similar to the almd now i want you to notice this uh basically this highlighted caution symbol down here it says basically factory talk views se version 10 is the last version that will support legacy hmi tag alarms so with that said you're going to need to migrate up you're going to need to transition to factory talk alarms and events again they do tell you this uh use factory talk uh, the strategy to use factory talk alarms and events here's more information you can click here to see that again that will drag you to here that will talk about how to basically you know go through that as well um, again just to kind of show you that I've taught factory talk alarms and events for quite some time uh, again uh, if you wanted to see that there's plenty of videos on how to do that uh, on the internet but using your legacy tag um, system just like you are the setup is done just like this so you create an alarm, okay? So you, you would check this box, you, then you come over here, click this button. This would create this alarm, right? This would basically make it an alarm. You wanna say what type of an alarm it is. Basically, this is a digital, just a transition from a zero to a one, right? So we want the, the type to be triggered when it's an on, okay? Or you can do it when it's off, whatever the case may be, whatever your case is, right? So in, in your environment. You can change your severity level right here. And again, I'm saying this this current alarm for my system is a high severity. If I look at my uh, ALMD, I currently have this ALMD set at a high severity. So I what I did, to, I just said, hey, I'm gonna match it to this and put it at a high severity. This right here is your label. Again, that's your label on, a label right here to kind of give it, is it an alarm? Or what kind of what do you want to stay what do you want to say when it's an alarm right what do you want it to display on the screen all right so the next one would basically I just defaulted out uh, in the advanced tab what I did is the you have an alarm identifier the alarm identifier is very much like what's inside of the ALMD instruction you have the ability to pull up a screen you can basically go to navigation pull up a screen and have that uh, pulled up I'm currently pulling up the batch station right or the batching screen. So if I were to go right here, um, and the alarm's not active anymore, let's make the alarm active real quick. Let's make the alarm active by going over here, coming right here, and triggering this on, just like this. Now, if I come over here, this comes over here. Now, if I wanna identify it, I can click that, and it will take me to the screen that I currently have. Now that's how that identifier works, right? So this is very much a powerful tool, helps the operations of the HMI. So if somebody operating the HMI can actually go to where that alarm may be, right? The screen that that alarm is on. Now, not necessarily, I mean, you can dig down to the actual device level if you actually wanted to, if you had a separate device, like say for instance, like a, there's a small screen, a couple of small screens I have in this application, you can do that as well. Um, and you can have an acknowledge bit right here as well. I currently have this as an auto reset, um, but that's just how I have it working. So that's how you, you would actually use your legacy tag uh, alarm system, right? So again, making a tag, checking the box, coming over here. There's a couple different things I'm gonna talk about in this video. Um, of course, I didn't accept it, so that's, that's what the alarm was. I wanna actually tell you uh, how to make the screen as well. So pulling up the screen, uh, basically I'll, let me just take the screen. I'm gonna use my alarms and events screen right here and I'll show you real quick. I'm gonna duplicate one just to make it, we'll call this test. Uh, just to make a simple screen real quick, I'll show you how to make one real quick. I'm gonna delete my alarms and events. I'm gonna come over here. Then I'm gonna grab an object. I'm gonna go down to uh, uh, advanced. I'm gonna go to HMI tag alarm summary. Then I'm gonna grab right here. I'm gonna go and make this basically full screen. 
this is going to come into a point where I can edit it. All right, so I want you to note, editing this, this changes the very top left-hand corner. This is where you can insert the name, the, like the tag name I can put right here. This is where you insert the tag value right here. Uh, if you wanted to insert the description right here. Uh, if you wanted to insert the, the type, let's just put the type right here. You want to insert the actual uh, date that it happened and insert the time it happened right here. Also, this is where you would format, and I want you to understand this, your filter. So your filter is your area, right? So make sure if you're passing a parameter, you like passing parameters through a button to call up different areas, you want to make this a number one and put that right there. That's the key to kind of get the communication working. I just want to let you know that when you're passing parameters. Also, your buttons. Let's just say you don't want all these buttons like the acknowledge current, acknowledge page, acknowledge all, silence. Uh, I generally take the silence off, okay? And the page acknowledge, and then that shrinks that down, and then you have, you currently have a, a page. That's what it would look like. Now to edit this again, you just double click it, and you can come back into edit, and there's no right clicking to this. You just come up here to format. You can format the buttons. You can format uh, different things about this. All this is all completely up here. You can tell, um, and that's how that works. Now, of course, we're not going to keep that screen because it was a test screen. So I'm going to delete it. But I wanted to show you how I set this one up. And again, so I have an alarm screen for my alarms and events, which is my the newer style of things, the way you should do things. I have the legacy style, which again, you have to use your, you have to double click and you have to come up here and edit the stuff you want from your header bar or your, your, header, your top header up here. So it's a little bit harder to set up. Also, too, what I want to uh, let you know, we talked about parameter passing. All right, so how does that work? So I made a button down here on the very bottom of my header, on the bottom of my footer on my HMI. I open that up, and I come over here, and this is where I would pass my parameter. So let me show you the way that works. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to display. Then I'm going to come over here to display. I'm going to pick the display I want to want to actually run this is the legacy no, my my display is, is actually named alarm legacy screen then I'm going to come over here to tag parameter tags and then I want to actually you know pass in what I want okay in this instance I'm going to come over here to alarms and I'm going to click that I'll paste that in there then I'm going to do a backslash because I want in this case, I want all my alarms. I'm going to do a backslash, and then I'm going to do an asterisk. And the asterisk, what that's saying is uh, basically it's just allowing a wild card. It's saying I want all the alarms. Okay. So currently, that's pass. That's how you pass parameters, and that's why you see that there. This is passing the parameter. And generally, you'll see people remove the the quotations of the screen. That's just because that's a preference. Um, so with that said, we'll come over here and, sh and see this. Now currently, you see I have the alarm triggered. Okay, so right here. And if I pass the parameter, it's, it's up here. Now you did see that that does pass that parameter on the very bottom. And you can see that that pulls all that up. So that's how the two are working. And again, the notation of uh, also, there's another one for the, the tag, the legacy tag, and that's going to be down here in, in HMI tag uh, alarms. Okay. I want to show you another keynote too, so don't run off it just yet, but I'm going to show you another keynote if you have trouble getting them on and off. So, real quick, um, the severities, if you want to set the severities right here, you can set the severities, like say for instance, I'm using severity six, I can use an external bell. So if I wanted to turn on an external like horn or siren or something like that, that's where I would tie that in. And I would just pick the tag that I want to trigger based upon what I put in there, right? And the message, user message, I usually keep that default, but that's again up to your the user preference, um, again, and how your system's currently set up. But that does tell you how things are working and how an enunciation is done based upon a severity level of your uh, basically your legacy HMI tag alarms. 
Okay, so keep that in mind, parameter passing, uh, how everything's laid out, how you take HMI uh, alarms, and basically, if this is the first time you've ever uh, deployed a new system and you're having trouble, or your alarms are not showing, you wanna come over here to command line, and you wanna type in alarm off. Hit enter, okay, then you wanna go into alarm on, hit enter again, and that will actually help trigger this actual screen to work because sometimes the screen doesn't work right if the, when you first employ the screen it may not trigger it may not work i'm showing you a testing environment again my system currently works i can show you this system does currently actually fluently work um you can see all the videos before and prior to this now when it comes down to it uh let's talk about a little bit about uh let's reset this so currently right here, you can see that's there. Um, and on my legacy, it's gonna automatically show that it, it basically, well, it acknowledged. Okay, so I'm gonna acknowledge everything. I'm gonna go to my alarms, and my alarms, I'm going to hit the, this, is, this screen right here is the alarms and events. So I still have to, my ALMD, if you notice right here, my ALMD is still on. Okay, that's the way I have my logic. My AMD is still triggered. It's still giving me my, my message. So I need to come over here to my HMI, hit global reset, global reset right here. And then I'm gonna go to acknowledge button and then I'm gonna acknowledge it. So now currently I don't have any alarms on my system. If I trigger that one more time and that's based upon my alarm, let's trigger that down. Let's go find that actual baseline where that starts let's trigger that and come over here and let's see that trigger both alarm systems so I wanted to show you uh, the legacy tags how that communicates and how that all that works in a short video also um, the two systems working hand by hand in hand side by side so if you wanted to actually build your uh, alarms and events system and you were trying to get off of the legacy system and you're trying to get more fluent you're going to move so you're moving forward past factory talk 10 um, then you're going to go you can run these systems in tandem side by side i will tell you that's exactly what i'm doing right here and that's exactly why i showed this video how to set these up and how to make these things work um, but again i've made so many videos on how to do alarms and events factory talk alarms and events that i wanted to show and it's all fairness that we show the legacy side and how things are built so and it's all fairness with that saying being said that we run them side by side so that you can see that can i actually run them side by side is that a healthy thing can i uh build my system out on factory talk alarms and events while i am still on legacy yes you can and um i'm showing this right here so uh, with that said hopefully that was helpful hopefully that showed you a lot uh basically uh, alarming is very something is is a, a very complex thing based upon the end user, the factory you're working in, or the mill you're working in, the application you're working on. Uh, generally speaking, alarms and events are, are, are where everybody's headed. That's what I've been using for years. Um, and again, that's the best practice as of this point. Um, and when it comes down to it, the legacy alarms, a, a tremendous amount of people were using that in the past, still probably are because the simple fact of, well, uh, it all started with RS View. And uh, RS View, that was the baseline tag uh, structure as far as the way things were going. People used HMI tags. And again, we're kind of moving away from that now. So when it goes down to it, they're getting things more fluent, more direct tagging, more working better. We're understanding computers better. Software's getting better. So that's why these systems are changing and getting better. So I want to show you the difference between the two and uh, just note, your system still work, will work with Factory Talk 10 with Legacy as long as you're, you don't plan on moving forward. But if you do plan on moving past Factory Talk 10, please make plans and do your preparation to move forward and to change to alarms and events because that will greatly help you in the future. Hopefully this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.